Okay. All right, everybody, welcome to our uh, first Gwinnett County Elementary Meetup in quite a while. Um, as I was mentioning to some people earlier, we are in the Elementor is in the process of moving a lot of their community activities to a different platform. Um, in time, you know, right now, it's kind of a, we're in between meetup and the events.elementor platform. And they're still, they're talking together, but it, eventually it'll just all be on events.elementor. Um, and we're working with Elementor to try to get, because El, this new platform also has a, a zoom like feature but it's been problematic in getting it to work properly so we're still using zoom and i guess the jury's out if we'll ever go over to that but we appreciate you jump through jumping through a few extra hoops to be here tonight so we appreciate that and tonight we're gonna we're doing something a little different from what we've done in the past to have it be a little bit more one-on-one -on -one, perhaps in the past, we would just kind of do a, a presentation and um, then people could ask questions. But what we're going to do is kind of flip it a bit and kind of open up the floor to people who have any elementary questions. And then um, as time allows, I have a few little things that I have put aside or lined up to share on uh, tips and things you may you know that little things that might be a slightly hidden that you didn't know was there and might be helpful to you so um first we'll start out does anybody have any questions challenges with the elementor that they've been working with or something that you just can't figure out or wish you knew how to do Hi, uh, Curry. I have one, but I don't know if this is specific from Elementor. Okay. Because uh, what I want to do is imagine that you have those uh, pages with, where you have uh, three services with three different prices, and each one has a button to, to buy or to hire the service. So what I want to do is uh, if you press the button, for example, you have basic, uh, intermediate, and advanced, you know, the service A, B. So you're talking about like a, like a, a package, like a basic package or a basic service, an intermediate service, and an advanced service, and then you list out the features exactly. and then the price and then buy. Okay. Correctly. And, and then what I want to do is if you press the button, for example, for advanced, it takes you to uh, to the contact page and there is a contact form so you you're going to type your name maybe your email but i want that automatically uh, it says uh, in service number three because you press button number three or, or service advance right or service or, or if you press the, the first ones the service is the beginner then you're going to fill the name your email and automatically it's going to be uh, the the service so so the, the the person that gives the service knows what are you interested but you don't have to the user have not to write it again because you already clicked the button okay um well it, it's going to have to have some way to pass some dynamic data um and I'm trying to think of a simpler way that. Harry, can he walk through that one more time just so I can hear it again? Sure. What, what Juan is wanting to do is I understand it. He's got, he'll have a, a sales page, if you will, or a. Yeah, I got the three. Um, I got that. But when yep. you click on the and button. He, and he, he wants that when, if they click on, um, if they click on the advanced package, he wants the con the form where people are. You wanting the the form for people to sign up and pay, or just 
to make an, an inquiry about it. No, just an inquiry. So when you're in the contact okay. form, you, you send the email and and the person that receives the email will know in which service are you interested. Well, you could do it. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, Kerry. Um, oh, I'm sorry, let me I go through. He wants that when they click on one of the services that the form that they're taken to Pat knows which service they're wanting. So it would say, um, you know, you could would say, uh, I'm interested in, it's like pre-populating a, a form yeah. field. The one I'm interested in is, um, is, you know, the advanced package. If they click on the, the beginner's package, it would say beginner's package. Um, so my question is, what forms are you using? Uh, the one that works. I, I don't know which one could are be. Are you using Elementor or Gravity Forms or which forms are you using? Well, I'm using Elementor, but uh, I can use, I don't know, Gravity Forms, Constant Forms, Ninja Forms. I, I don't know which is the one that would do that. Anyone, just tell me which one you're using. Okay, the, the basic that use one is Contact Form 7. Okay. I'm not familiar with that one, but um, if you use Elementor Forms, you can set the, um, uh, actually, can, can I uh, show him? Um, sure, sure. Okay, just a minute. Um, Maybe, um, yeah. <laughs> just hold on a second. <laughs> Give me a second before you, sh sorry. I was eating, so I'm trying to, <laughs> not uh well whenever you want to share your screen you should be able to go ahead um, okay. you know and you could you could pass dynamic information from the uh, the page or you could have hey oscar and or you could have multiple you have three different forms which is um, I would like only to use one form because if I've had got gotcha. you, yeah, you don't need to use separate all. forms. You can do all of this in one form. Exactly. Um, sorry. Um, <clears throat> let me find my. Let me get out of my work mode. <laughs> gotcha. And into my after work mode. <laughs> Um. Okay. Okay, um, y'all just let me know if y'all can see my screen. Yep, we can. Okay. Oh, da, 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 da. By the way, Karen, what Sharon is using right now is she's accessing the site through Manage WP. We were talking about that last week, I think. It's my favorite tool. I love it. I love my managed WP. Okay. Um, let me see. Page. Let me see a page that I've got something set up in. I might have to just create a new page. So it, um, one, if I was setting this up in Elementor and Gravity Forms, um, actually, I think I have Gravity Forms on something else, but um, it depends on what you use. I used to use Gravity Forms all the time because it was very powerful. 
but um, um, when Elementor first came out, I wouldn't use it because it wasn't as powerful as Gravity Forms. But I've gone back to using Elementor because uh, Dynamic .oo has kind of added back the features that I used to find in Gravity Forms. So I've gone, I've dripped it back to using just Elementor Forms so that I don't have to keep adding plugins, okay? Okay. So, um, <clears throat> and dynamic, dynamic content for Elementor or dynamic.oo is another plugin, right? Yes. And yeah. unfortunately it is not free and it does cost money. So you do, and um, sorry, let me back up a little bit. In order to use Elementor Forms, it is the pro version that the forms come in. So, um, okay. So that that's also, you know, um, and actually, you know, Juan, I did tell you you want a free version of the dynamic uh, content for Elementor. So, um, I'm on Giovanni for getting that to you. So don't forget. <laughs> yes. Okay, I would remember you. Yeah, thank you. That that is coming to you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So let me just um, drag in a form and um, so we're going to make up. Um, so before I have a form, you're going to you're going to have three um, three panels, right? Yes, but the, but the price is adding another page. It's not the right. same page. There are yes. two different pages. Okay. So you're gonna have uh, three pages with the button, right? Correct. And this button is, uh, so this button is going to be, um, I'm sorry, tell me. Uh, package, it? package beginner. Okay. Or package one, whatever. So you have a beginner. And what's the other one? Advanced and something else? Yeah, I don't know. Intermediate, or something in the middle. I'm sorry. What was an intermediate? Intermediate. Yeah. The beginner, advanced, and super premium. It, it, it doesn't matter. Or one, two, three. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm do, <laughs> I'm <laughs> over <that. laughs> Okay, and that uh, premium, the last one. Okay. Great. Okay. Or they could be like gold, platinum, or whatever. But yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So, um, <clears throat> and then. I've got to create the page in order for us to link to it. So hold on just a second. Oops. I did say paste, didn't I? Why is it? I will admit that I've been having some elementary trouble. <laughs> I 
it doesn't it doesn't do what I want it to do. <laughs> Yeah, it sometimes certainly happens, particularly if you're trying to do it with add-on plugins. But okay, so what she's doing is taking these buttons and linking them all to the same page. Okay, I'm also taking out the HTTPS because I don't know if you guys know, but you don't need that because it just requires another call to the server. So it's called a relative link. You don't need it. You want to take out everything before it. It's still on the same server. So you don't need it. You just need the page. And that sometimes can be helpful if you're work building a site on, a, say, a staging environment. And yeah. you don't want to have to worry about going in and updating links. That, having the relative link, that will work on whatever domain it's on. All right, also. Uh, yeah. Okay. Am I calling me? What was that for? Okay, when you are naming buttons, it's very important that you give them unique IDs. Preferably, you should name them better than what I'm doing right now, but I'm just doing this because uh, I'm not doing the project. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. So now, the key to uh, sending information to another page is to put a question mark so that you can send information and you want to be able to collect that information to on the next page. So it's called a request. Um, and you can actually do this easier with uh, your dynamic OOO. Okay, but I'm doing it the, um, the longhand way. <laughs> okay. So what you would do is uh, you have to give it what's called a key value. The key being you have to give it a name, the key, and then the value comes from the information being passed. So the key is probably, um, what's the, uh, let's say this is, uh, what, what is this, like a trip or a painting or something? What are, what are you trying to, um, what are you trying to sell? <laughs> Sign up or whatever. You're on mute, baby. Juan, you're, you're on being mute. muted, round one. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, let's say, for example, um, this summer that you're going to have uh, for the kids. I don't know how to say that in English when they go to a camp. Oh, OK. So it's a camp. Uh, OK, so. Let's say that you have uh, the camp that is the basic and then another one that includes the, the food and another one includes the food and the transportation, for example. Okay. So, um, kids, kids, yeah. Okay. So I'm in the beginner here. So, okay. so this is, so I'm calling it kids camp, and then I'm going to talk. So then the value is going to be beginner. All right. And so I'm going to just copy this here, and then I'm going to go over to advanced, and I'm just going to paste this, and then take out beginner. Go over to premium. Okay, I can't type either. Shouldn't that be premium? Yeah. 
sorry I'm, okay. I, it, again I, i'm just oh i got you i know that it's <laughs> hard to do on the, the spur of the moment and on the fly so okay so you see you see how the key and value okay. yeah all right so so now um Update it. I probably clicked that too fast, but I'm sorry. Oh. And again, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so this this page takes us to a form where they would just where you're just collecting their information, right? Yes. Just to remind you, Juan, this is being recorded, and we'll post it in the next day or so, and we'll send out the link so you you can you can come back and refer to this. Yes, awesome. Sorry, I kind of do this better sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So, so you collect whatever information you need, and you know if you. If you want to do, you know, separate fields, first name, last name, or whatever, if you want to just set that up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Can I ask just a quick question? Did you just, that's three columns and you just gave widths to the left and right column, but not the center one, correct? Yeah, because the center will just automatically the, take on Be as wide as it Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, sometimes if I'm just do, doing a form on the page, I don't want the form to take up the whole page. So, sure. but I want, I kind of just want it to be centered on the page. And actually I would probably push it a little more, you know, in, I wouldn't, probably wouldn't have it this wide. And I would probably do a first name, last name. I don't know, you know, <laughs> I would probably do, let's see. I would probably actually do 30 30 on here. Maybe, maybe actually 25. 25. So that it's 50 50. Yeah. This probably more what I would do. Uh, on the form, I have a title on the page, you know, it'd be more spiffy. <laughs> anyway, um, so. You make sure you give your form a name. Um, collecting info for our kids camp. Um, always remember if I'm thinking I told you guys before, always make sure that your fields have, a, you know, an ID, which you need to have those <clears throat> so that you're you can use these at a later time. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, can that one could be a, a checkbox? Check a, a checkbox with the three values. Why, why is that for? Because if you arrive directly to the contact form page, and here you type your name and you click which uh, which of the three are you interested. I mean, you can do it 
or go and take a look to the price, press the button and get here or directly here, select what you're interested. But the idea is that if I click the button in the other one, for example, for the premium, when I arrive here, the premium is pre-selected. Well, we could do that too. I mean, yeah, I, okay. But this is what you said you wanted. <laughs> so, yes. so I, I mean, I would have kept everything on one page. Yeah, I think what he's saying, Sharon, if I can interrupt, he's, you have the one page where you choose which of the three you're trying to go to. So once you get to the form, you're to the form specifically for Premier, or you're to the form, you don't have to check it again there, because you already pre-selected it at the beginning, you chose yeah. advanced, or which of the three programs you're interested. In. So everything from that path on is in that vein that you're you're going to be with and actually here's what i would have done let me just back up a little bit i wouldn't actually start with two pages i would just do one pages but create a multiple step form this is what i would have done let me just back up one minute here so let's just stay on the same page here and <clears throat> um sorry Come on, come on. You just take a breath. <laughs> so, so let's say you still want them to do three options. And I would still do a form, but let's make it a multi step form. So uh, Sharon, just to make sure I'm understanding where you're going with this. So you're saying have a multi-step form that only shows you certain portions of the form depending on your initial selection instead yeah. of having three separate forms and each of those forms is individual. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense to you as well, Juan? Yeah, yeah. That, that is the idea that if you arrive directly to the contact form page you can select one of the three. But as, as you said, Brian, if you choose, if you click the button in the other page for the premium here, you don't have to select again premium because you already did it before. Right. Yeah. Um, you want everything to be on that path of whatever you select. And what Sharon's doing is allowing you to use the same form, but you only have access to certain portions of it, depending on your selection, if I'm correct, sure. Yeah. Uh, where's the steps? Where's the stairs? The way that the steps work here, it's very confusing. I know I've done it like a couple of times and I still have to walk myself through it a lot. Um, You don't have to label the steps because they oftentimes get in the way, but let's just say, so let's just say that, uh, just. And Sharon, while you're building that out, can you explain to us what is the benefit doing it as one form over and being able to access different parts of it depending on your initial selection over having three specific different forms oh my god um the work <laughs> okay i mean and, and 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 that's a great benefit is you know time for some yeah the work i mean it, i mean so i mean you have to think it out too i mean we're doing this live so Again, I didn't think it out from the very beginning, but as as y'all were discussing it and I heard that question again, I'm thinking, oh my God, why didn't I just do a step form? So you have to think out the question and think what's the easiest path to doing that? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so he wants to select a path for, okay, if I select beginner, 
I'm going to collect the information, right, Juan? You collect the information, and then they're going to fill out. They're just going to send the email. It's going to be sent, right? Yes. If, if you click the button, for example, premium, here you have the, that value from the first page. But yeah. here it will collect the, the name and the email, for example, and add that value of premium. And when you oh. click the button, the final destination will have the name, the email, and the, the package that you are interested in. Yep. Okay. And then what happens after that? Uh, well, after that, uh, then maybe this, the, this person will contact with the email and said, ah, oh, you're interested in the premium. Here is the price or whatever, extra info. So, so, the user, the so what I would do, um, so I wouldn't stop there. So what I would do is, um, again, you have to think this out. You would want to actually, so send the email, um, send the email once they submitted it, you send the email to them, but you also send them to a thank you page telling them, you know, it's kind of like you want to keep their attention and, you know, either, um, I, I don't know what you have to offer, but tell them, you know, what they're looking forward to. You yeah, that, yeah. that would be awesome to say, the, Juan, thank you very much for your interest in the premium package. Yeah, yeah. Or one, thank you very much for in the interest in the beginner package. That's what yeah. it's going to change. Right. Okay. So um, that's what I'm saying. Um, so anyway, um, so I, I think in my head I'm building this wrong. But what I would do, let me put some buttons on the page here. Where's my buttons? Buttons. I need three buttons, so I need an inner, inner section here. Okay, <clears throat> so. So same concept, whatever button I click. And what I'm going to do is, what I can do is hide this form. <clears throat> so actually, what I would do is have another intersection in this form. It would be in here. And I can hide this form based on which button is clicked in here. And it doesn't matter which button is clicked because it's going to show based on um, whatever's clicked is going to be passed into this form. And then this this will disappear or well, I could just keep whatever button is uh, clicked. And so it would show whatever they, you know, whatever option they pick. And then the form will appear and then they would be able to, to uh, fill it out. When they click send, we could actually, again, keep them on the same page, have another section, and it would display thank you, blah, blah, blah. You follow me? Yes. Okay. And I'll do it on the same page. <laughs> and it's based on visibility. And um, again, you can do it with dynamic content. And I think I can take you offline and walk you through this instead of, because I know we're taking up a lot of the time that they have planned for something else. <laughs> sure. Okay. That sound okay, Juan? Yes, yes. No, that's why I, I started with it, saying that. I, I don't know if the question was for this topic, but it, it's, it's fine. Yeah. 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 I, th I think you would be better just doing one page and doing it all dynamically because you don't want to. I mean, you could do it all on separate pages, but again, <clears throat> um, I think. Uh, What's the, what's, the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, users nowadays are, nowadays are uh, really you know, doing things a lot quicker. And the ability that we have to give them things quickly, we don't want to lose their, their patience. You know, we want to be able to give them things quick and easy. And by giving them, okay, make this selection. Oh, fill this out. Oh, and look, thank you so much. <laughs> you know? 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. So maybe y'all could, Juan, yeah, you I, could give, uh, put the, your email. email. Or, yeah, he's oh, got okay, my good. email. <laughs> okay, good. All righty. Anybody else have any things they've been challenged by Elementor with? You're always working on something new and interesting, Guy. What's up with, do you have anything? Actually, I do. Um, okay. Good to see you all after, uh, I haven't seen you all in a few, couple months. Hope you all are doing well. Yeah. Um, I have an interesting, uh, it's probably a simple answer, and I don't know why I'm not figuring it out, but I am trying to, the easiest way to do a multi-line link using a text box. Um, I'm, well, let me tell you what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to create a, an address link where you hover over the address and it's three lines, you know, street, uh, city, state, whatever. And it all hover, change, you know, hover over it. It changes the color, they all change the color at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. But I find when I use, you know, for that sort of stuff, I usually use a text link. I go into the text editor instead of the, you know, the, the graphic editor, the WYSIWYG editor. And I like to just fill in the, add the hover, at, add the line breaks and have the whole thing have a hover at, attribute, but I find it's uh, Elementor like does not, uh, you can put in those BR breaks in the code. And, but then when you come back out and say, you'll save the page, uh, leave the page. And only part back, of it, the link is there. Yeah, it comes back in, it like, does not like to keep those, the break codes. And so, right. Uh, I don't know if it's a. Are you putting the, the, um, the multi line link, as you call it, in a box of some sort? Um, or a column? Yeah, because I'm usually putting it with other things like a, a telephone link, a fax link, and then an address link. And ideally, the address link, you click on it. To take you to a Google map. Or so depending on the situation, you could make the container, clicking on the container a link and have the styles for the um, text change when you hover over it. Over the whole So container. the link is actually in the container. Um, That's sort of like three columns on top of each other, I guess. Well, um, There's different situations, different kinds of containers, but like I know that um, I'll put, like a lot of times when I do a homepage, I'll have um, a number of containers that might be talking about different features and it'll have a read more button on it sure. or learn more or something, but the whole box is clickable. Right. Um, and um and then there's, although I think Elementor now has made it to where it might be native to some Elementor elements, there was a plugin called Make Columns Clickable. Yeah, like for a that. long time, you couldn't do that without. Uh, yeah. I, I, had a, I can't remember what I used, but I did the same thing. Uh, you could do columns and, and sections as clickable, but you had to have a plugin for that. Yeah, and you could, uh, I mean, you could have, in the, for the, that column, you could, and if somebody else has a simpler idea, jump right in. Um, you could make in the column for the CSS, you know, how you, in the advanced at the very bottom, right. it has CSS for that thing. You put selector and then put A, you know, selector LG. space A, and then what you want the, you, you know, if you want it to look like a, a link, um, if you wanted to go old school and have it underlined in blue or whatever. Right. Um, you could get, do those CSS styles for that, and then have another um, CSS rule that says selector space a colon hover bracket, right, right. and then have it change color or whatnot, and then have the whole column linked to wherever you want to go. Okay. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, though I find, what's the problem I'm having with that then? Either, um, maybe I'm just trying to make it one entire link. So I've been trying to solve it that way instead of doing this. I think that's why I keep taking the, um, putting the line breaks in and just have it all be one link. But maybe, so maybe I'm just, I see what you're saying now. And then add the behavior to that column link thing. Yeah, you can change the CSS. Um, yeah, because I've done that. I don't know, I feel like sometimes it still treats them as separate lines though. So for example, if you hover over the first part of the line, it'll only, it'll only light up or set, hover color that or, uh, uh, let me go back and well, try, let me try it. it. Yeah, let me go back let and- Let me give it a shot here. Um, oh, okay. Let me, uh, Let's see, I'll share my screen and see if I can do something really down and dirty fast. Um, uh, share screen, Joe Chrome and page, okay. Okay. So let's see, um, we'll create a new page. Okay, we'll leave this over here. Um, publish. So I might have to change. Okay, so I'm just going to um, do it like this, take this, and we'll go here, we'll take some text so let's say that let's say that's your link and i'm going to select this column i'm going to go to advanced go to css selector a mm, okay i can see a, a flaw in this law um I think part of it, because you know, with an address, you want one part of the address to be on one line, the next, sure. on the next and then, and so forth. I, okay, well, I think it has something to do with that. My problem, but let's do. Let's try it this way. Let's see if we can make this a link. All of them a link. Um, okay, I'm gonna. Uh, we'll just put test dot html. No, that didn't work. Okay, well, it sort of does. See, it it hovers. Right, but then, but you see how it's put everything back together. And with an address, you definitely want to keep those three lines, but have the the entire thing hover just like have the all of it, the uh, hover color happen. Okay. That's and I good. tried, you know, you can go into the text thing and add, you know, HTML break code, you know, what is the, just the BR and it, but Elementor, once you leave the page, it forgets about those. Sometimes you got to click back in it. It just has weird behavior trying to use the text. And see, now you got all the link and everything there and you can add breaks into it. But if you'd save it, leave the page and come back, it'll run it all together right. and forget that you've added the breaks in. Okay, let's um, go back here.
if I wanted to make this column clickable, I don't recall right off the top of my head um, how to do that. I know with the, the one plugin I use, it would add an item into the advanced thing, I think advanced. Yeah, I, I uh, remember the plugin. I the address, thought there was, yeah. seemed like I remember some point that Elementor hit, a, maybe it was just another plugin that did it better. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Column gap yeah, drop cap. Now let's try this. Let's see. Uh, 240 Main Street. Um, anywhere. Georgia. Okay. So, and then let's go to text. And let's say div. I'm just making this up as I go along, but sure. And then, and then we'll go um, visual, and then we'll add a link um, slash test. Test. Okay. So what uh, look at the HTML. Actually I want this to be on the outside of the div. Let's see. Let's see. Cut, I'm gonna cut that, paste it there, get rid of that, cut, paste. No, that won't work. You said it's a three line address. Uh, you could probably, I mean, or I mean, I, I think you're the two, if you can get it to work for two lines, I, I, that, that'll. I'm sure that solution will work for three, so this would be fine. Okay, let's see what you said. Let's try to give it a link. Okay, so it made the top one and not the bottom. So, and you said when you got out of elementary and came back, it was broken or? I think you're muted, Guy. Sorry. Um, yeah, like if you uh, leave the page and then come back, you, I, I usually will find that, um, the link has been put into one line. It's sort of forgotten that. Okay. Or maybe not. I don't know what the problem is. Well, I don't know if it'll make a difference, but when you were putting the BRs in there, well, now it's, that's interesting. Yeah, see, there you go. It, it uh, um, the BR vanishes. Now, it looks like it's still got the break and everything. So, you know, what I haven't well, been doing is 
putting everything in a div, for example, maybe that is solving the problem that I'm having. I would just have the link. I assumed that the text editor element handled, you know, kept it of a piece, but maybe uh, making sure the divs are there are uh, what can what's going well. On. One thing too, when I put the br in, of course, Elementor understood that and just added it to a new line. But right. I don't know if it makes a difference. But I know the old days brs look like that. Right. And now now they look like this. Oh yeah, because then uh, you know one is HTML and one is like XHTML. I know I know and yeah. Maybe, well, it's I, maybe it's because I'm the using latest. the BR without this backslash, <laughs> without the self-closing. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, I don't remember, several, uh, maybe it's been as long as five years ago, they started having, being kind of insistent on that there'd be a, I'm not sure if it's called closing the tag. I right. can't remember, but. Yeah, BRs like are this. usually self-closing. So, yeah, yeah. So, anyway. But you see, it's kind of flat again. Like, what if you, uh, you know, you've lost the lines? Um, no, it's just the, what Elementor does that when you're in the text editor, this loses okay. its formatting sometimes. All right. Maybe that's what is going so, on for me then. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, that. it happens to me all the time that if, you know, like I'll cut and paste, um, right. say three paragraphs into the um, text editor. Let's say I was putting this column and all, and then I went to the text, you know, the, the text part. This, this would all go into just one lot, big blob of text. Right. And right. then if I went back to visual and clicked on it, it'd break into the three paragraphs again. Oh, okay. So, can you verify that by viewing the page to see how it actually looked? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, see, there you go. No, it's that's still one line. Still one yeah. line, yeah. Yeah, see, there you go. That's, I think that's what's going on with me. I'm like, what? Why? I can't make it do keep the breaks. And then, yeah, that, that's what happens. And then you come back. Well, but see, there you go. When you're in the editor, yeah, I think I feel like when you go live, then it forgets where the breaks are. Well, let's see. Whoops, what did I do here? Okay. Take this. Just doing that to give it more vertical space. Let's see. Let's see here. Well, yeah, I, I think um, probably what you need to do is be to um, say Elementor, Elementor, make um, clickable. I feel like I have solved the problem somewhere, but I, I keep thinking there should be an easier solution that I'm just missing that I don't have to do a weird thing. For well, a let me just put this in chat and maybe it'll be helpful. Sure. Um, let's see, where's chat? There we go. I'll just put it in for everybody in case somebody's interested. It seems like such a simple 
simple thing to fix, but we're obviously seeing how difficult it is. You should just be able to go somewhere and maintain the the breaks and everything. You should be able to tell Elementor, hey, keep it exactly how I, I want it. And it's weird because, you know, uh, um, you know, addresses are on websites you know? <laughs> and you yeah. want it to be act like a single link. I don't know. I keep thinking I'm just missing something uh, and I don't know. What it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a interesting. I've never run across that before, but. Yeah. What happened to the HTML address field? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, there is that. I mean, I, I thought about doing that, just put in a HTML widget and then just hard code the whole thing. But I feel like there should be an easy way to do it. <laughs> you know, because they're, they're well. you know, I want that link, for example, I don't want to do an HTML widget because I wanted to call that uh, Elementor um, textile that I've defined. So right. I think with, the with an HTML widget, it's just looking for the code. It's not, I'm not, I mean, I haven't tested that, but you know, I wanted to use the styles I put into Elementor. And, and so, you know, I was keep thinking, all right, well, the, the text thing has got to work for that because then of course I can define that that way. And in HTML, I just, I literally have to like do the whole, you know, do the whole entire bit. And, and there, I just feel like there's got to be an easy way. Well, let's see. Um... Yeah, I'll keep, uh, maybe I'll keep searching. I have to say, and I, I hate to say this in front of <laughs> my elementary friends, <laughs> but elementary has really been frustrating me a lot lately, especially after they do their updates. Um, and I, I really, Again, it goes back to the statement I made earlier. You know, I'm not I'm not at a stage in my life where I want to track down what made this happen. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm preparing. One, you know, I have my work to do, and two, I'm preparing for my talk. You know, for my group next week, and my talk for my group is you know doing the shortcuts and some tips and tricks and stuff in elementary. And on most, actually, on all of my elementary websites that I have out there, except for one that I just recently built, um, all of my keyboard shortcuts don't even work anymore. I mean, control, you know, control the control commands like control C, control V, all that stuff works, but the escape key, you know, that you get to, you know, to escape and exit dashboard, that doesn't work. The control question mark to pull up the action shortcuts doesn't work. Um, you know, uh, the other day I was in my most important client's website and my template that I used um, for, I, I built the template. Well, there's a twofold template. It, it has a loop, which was built in Elementor uh, custom skins. And then also mm -hmm. built with anywhere Elementor. Well, I was I was actually doing something else, uh, looking at the production website, <laughs> and I, I was just sitting there looking at the, a product, just a single product, just looking for something for my client, and I noticed the header and footer were completely gone from the single product, and I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'm just sitting there baffled. I'm, I'm like, what the fuck? Sorry, I'm sorry. No. But literally I said that to myself. <laughs> hmm. So I go and look at- we, the We've all been there. We've all been there at some point or another. Yeah. Usually at least once a project. <laughs> I go and look at the template and it's completely gone. I'm like, and, and I, I literally, you know, you build the template in the full width view with the header and footer included. And I literally went back and looked at it and it just disappeared. It disappeared. Every time I saved it back, it disappeared. Every time I saved it back, it disappeared. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so I have no idea what's going on and how it happened and how I'm going to get it back. 
and it, it's just I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to figure out why why is Elementor crashing or or doing these things or you know why I can't show what I knew before and why it doesn't work now. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it, it just really it baffles me and it really confuses me and it frustrates me. Yeah, I, I think sometimes, and I don't know if this is the case, sometimes I see not what you described exactly, but things where things get, uh, it's almost like there's a gremlin in the website, mm -hmm. as if is, that sometimes it seems to be caused by third party elementary add-ons well yeah but you know uh, that's the thing this i mean fortunately yes i do have a staging and a development site for this but i don't have time to go and delete it i mean not delete i'm disable every plugin to figure out oh sure yeah 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 i know yeah. Yep. you know that's the thing elementary or or whatever plugin wants you to go and disable to figure out who's the who's the Who's the ghost bunny? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess that's why we get paid the big money to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but my clients don't pay me to do that. You know, my clients not pay me to figure out why somebody's plug-in is not working. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, well, that sounds like something that you could bring up at the next elementary leaders thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, that that's a good topic. I'm sure I'll yeah. be real pleased to hear that. <laughs> well, I feel like the last there've been uh, maybe a couple uh, I don't know if it's just cuz it's a new thing cuz at least uh, I've only been on elementary for I don't know a year and a half, but I feel like a couple updates lately came with those uh, the big warnings like uh, lots of deep changes, save a copy of your website before you update. And before that didn't happen as much. And at least- uh, Well, it didn't then, happen until they did 3.0 update yeah. and it was a unmitigated disaster. Right. And then after that, they started monitoring add-on plugins and whether they were compatible and giving you the notices like they're doing now. Yeah. Well, but, then- uh, and then, um, yeah, WooCommerce, that, that's my problem is that I do a lot of WooCommerce stuff. And so not only do I have Elementor, but I have WooCommerce to worry about as well. So. Right. And that's oh. a whole other kettle of fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all righty. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Because um, I've got a couple things I might run through in the last. 15, 20 minutes, if y'all are up for that. Sure. Go okay, for it, let dude. Me, let's see here. Uh, exit to dashboard. Okay. So I, I, I'm still sharing my screen, right? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I am going to, this is actually a, a copy of a website I'm in the middle of working on and I'm putting on a staging server so that I could screw around with it and, um, and if I broke something it wouldn't matter <laughs> okay and what I'm going to talk about here mostly I've got a three or four little small things I was going to go over but um, is trying to do your layout so that your pages load faster. And I'm going to show you an example of what is maybe not the best idea. And uh, is this section here. Looks pretty basic. It works. These are linked to pages. And if, but if you look at the elementary layout, what we've got is a section. Then there's a, then there's a column. Then there's an intersection, and there's another intersection, and three columns inside each intersection. So what we've got here, and this is about, you've probably heard this, of trying to reduce the DOM size. 
which is an acronym for something that's called document object model, I believe. And it basically is a, a word for how, you know, how much code is in the layout and the structure of your page. And we've got all these containers. We've got the, the section, we've got a column, we've got a section, we've got three more columns. We've got a, another section with three more columns. And what I, proposed to do is to take this thing that has three sections and seven columns and take it to be one section and one column and still have the same layout. So let's get, I'm going to take this and I'm going to right click and duplicate it. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to take this first um, bucket. This is an icon box. I'm going to take it and drag it out of the section and put it up here. Of course, you see it gets big. And I'm going to delete these other these intersections. Okay. So then I'm going to select this icon box, and I'm going to set the. Uh, let me take a look here. Dark in here. Uh, advanced position. Custom. Okay. I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go to positioning and I'm going to go to width and I'm going to go to custom and I'm going to go to percentage. And it's important to do the percentage. Um, like if you might accidentally put pixels and then go back. If, if, if what I did earlier was like, I might, cause I want it to be 33 and a third percent. So I went like this. And it doesn't pixels, but if I go like that, it doesn't change because Elementor, for some reason, doesn't remember that um, that I changed it. Okay, so I've changed the percentage to 33 and a third, and and I'm going to go to the advanced, and I'm going to do the margins of 10 pixels all the way around because in this other example the space in between the columns horizontally and vertically is 20 pixels so i'm going to do that and then i'm going to add a little motion effect to it to where it to, uh, fades in up when it loads and if we look at the page here that's what this does essentially Uh, it comes up, so we're, we want it to do that. So then we go down to this, and then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say cop, uh, duplicate, and see that this is com Command D. Um, I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to do, do a keyboard. I'm going to go Command D. And it, you'll notice that there's the little blue line around it. So this is still selected. I'm going to go Command D again. Has the blue line around. I'm going to go Command D again. And you go Command D again. Okay. So. We've made a lot of progress because essentially what we've done is we've recreated the structure. And uh, once we get it all the structure right, we can go in and, and make and update the colors and the icons and the text. But it's it's helpful to, at least in my opinion, to do it this way, get it all laid out and then update the text or the content. So um, we've got these now this looks um, I'm going to take notice one thing I don't know if you can tell this doesn't line up right because we've got too much padding here so I'm, I'm going to change the padding on this column go to advanced and I'm going to unlink these and I'm going to make instead of 20 on the left and right I'm going to make it 10 and so now it lines up right. And so I think we're ready to style it for tablet. 
So let's go over to, let me update it. And we go into responsive mode. And let's go to tablet. Three across doesn't work in this situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, click on this, and then I'm going to go to positioning, width, full width, and then I'm going to take, I'm going to take, I'm going to right click this, and I'm going to copy, and I'm going to right click this and paste style. Now, if you'll notice where it says paste style, it has Command Shift V. I'm, I guess on the PC it'd be Control Shift V. But I'm going to do that. Now let's see if those shortcuts work. I'm going to go Command because they were working earlier, but I had, did have some issues with them not working sometimes, like uh, Sharon was saying. Let me try that. Gary, what's the difference? Uh, and just copy in and paste in the one that's already correct. Are you going to create extra? Are you going to? Are you going to create now that I, I I said it out loud? Are you going to create extra uh, columns? I guess if you do it that way. Well, if I go in and start deleting, if I deleted this and made you know. If I deleted, let's say I deleted the all these and then just duplicated this, I would have deleted the um, the, the ones on the on the desktop. And well, yeah, yeah. After I, I after I said it out loud, I was like, well, now you're actually creating extra elements instead of copying and pasting the the format. Yeah, just pasting the, the style. Still there, you're just pasting the style, not the Okay. So, yeah. okay, so this this looks okay on mobile. So we'll go to excuse me on tablet. Of course, you can with the new uh, responsive area, you can look at it at different sizes in the mobile range. Or excuse me, tablet. And this is on mobile, but this is really I, I want this to be go all the way. I don't want. So we look at this. And let's look at the advanced. Uh, let me see here. Uh, advanced. And I'm going to take it to 10, mar 10 pixels on top. 10 pixels on bottom and leave the others at zero. So that gives it gives it some space, but not too much. So, and then if I, I'm gonna basically do the same thing. I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna see if this, I can get this to work. Control, Command, Shift, D. Well, there you go, Sharon. It, it, it seems like it ought to work, but it's not. Bring shortcuts and I'll do this paste style. You know, while I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering maybe um, if you have more than one application open. So say, you know, we do all our mentors in the browser. Uh, but if you have another application that uses some of the same shortcuts. Could uh, be, yeah. Maybe it could I run be. into that with Photoshop sometimes. You know, I thought about that too. And I have shut everything down and that still doesn't matter. I've, I've done everything possible. I, I've had that. Because I was actually on uh, the Slack channel, uh, I think I was explaining this to uh, Verde, and um, you know they gave me every explanation in the world, and I'm like, oh, 
y'all think I'm dumb. You think I haven't been on a damn computer in like ages. And, you know, right. and I'm like, I don't know nothing. I'm just a new user. <laughs> so I, I just like, you know, I gave up. I'm like, you guys, you know, you act like I don't know anything. And so, okay, fine. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just, you know, I, I, I'm just tired of it. And I, I just finally, I, I don't know how I'm going to do my, um, my uh, presentation next week. I'm just going to just, I, I guess, fly over when it doesn't work. I'm just going to show people, okay, this is what it's supposed to do. If it works on your computer, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we just have to kind of sometimes go with the flow. But yeah. <laughs> so what we've done here, let me reload this page. So we've taken these and then we've create recreated the structure here and we just need to would go in and change the colors and the icons and the text and you have this and then of course it responds to mobile and everything but the the point of all that exercise is whereas here we have we have we've got three sections one two three and we've got one two three four five six seven columns we've got three sections and seven columns here we have one section and one column so it, it makes the page less complicated and you could imagine if you did things like this down a whole long page you'd save a lot of a lot of uh, dom elements so so that was the, the point of that exercise. And there's other things you can do. Um, some, a lot of times headers have like a logo and maybe um, a phone number and a menu all in up. And people create three columns to do that when actually you could um, put them all in the, in the same one column, do them all in the same. And um, change the width to inline, which just makes the width exact size it is for each one. And then, um, and then, uh, then that br actually brings them into the same line. And then you can set the, um, I think it's width or positioning, I think. No, it's, it's in the tape, it's in the column. Um, let's see here. I'm not gonna do it in this column, but I'll select column in the, the horizontal line, if you use space between, if it, if you have inline elements, it'll push them like you had three. It put the one, the first one on the far left and the, the, the last one, the far right, and the, the one in the middle, in the middle. And so you'd have one column and rather than three columns, so you know, those kind of things can save you time. Uh, let's see, what have we got time for? Um, one thing I want to mention, and and um, I might ask for your input on this, Sharon. Um, I think it was I was working on this site that the, the you know we talked about how Elementary was had all these notifications, and um, you know, like well you know we're don't know that this is compatible for this. And anyway, Elementor was saying it had an update, but it said Elementor Pro is not compatible with this update. And I looked at the version of Elementor Pro and it was 3.31. And I knew at that point there was a 3.34 out, but it was not showing it. And so I went to um, an Elementor leader uh, office hours and talked to Verdi about it. And he, um, he first gave me this this idea of that he said, well, you know, it's kind of like when DNS propagates. Some people get it faster than others. But, I mean, this was like two, it got to be like two weeks after the update. But he said, what you can do, he said, you can download the latest version of Elementor and upload it. And he said, well, 
you know, it's some version five point something or other. Um, it now allows you to, you can override a plugin. And I didn't know that because last I knew about it, that wouldn't work. So he said it would work. Um, and I, I have not found, I mean, I haven't done an exhaustive search. I've not found anything on the internet that says that will work, but I tried it. And you, when you, it, the way it behaves is it's very much like when you're updating a, a theme, it'll, you know, say, Deleting the old theme, uploading the new the new theme, uh, upload you know, installation complete. It basically, you know, you I had Elementor Pro three point three one I think, and I was uploading Elementor three point three five, and it says you've already got Elementor Pro going. Uh, do you want to override it? And I said yes, and then it went through those sequence. And it seemed to work. Huh. Then I read, then I read somewhere a couple of days later that, um, well, when when you do that, but this post was a couple of years ago, said something about well, it will rename the folder, so because you can't have folders with the same names, it renamed the folder Elementor Pro One in your so i went and looked ftp'd into the site that's not the case so it, it seems to work i don't know if you've ever had any experience with that but um you might y'all in fact y'all run into that um or have any reason to do that um i just throw that out there the only one that um, <laughs> that i have is uh you know now they have a dev version which but I only I don't run those on my um, you know client sites. I just run them on my on my uh, sandbox sites that I work on. Right. <clears throat> and I do I do see that there is a different folder on those. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so like for instance, I see that there is a different folder for both Elementor and Elementor Pro. There's a dev folder uh, like a version dev 4 and a version dev 2.0 oh, like elementor pro is a version 3.4 dev 2.0 oh. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so i see that but i i don't yeah. so I, I don't know okay well if y'all run into a situation where you need to do that you might give it a try but you maybe for the first time well make sure you do a backup before you do it and then check it out so but the odd thing the, is, is I don't, I don't have trouble on my, on my sandbox sites. I have trouble on my, on my client sites. <laughs> huh. Well. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the, that the, the nature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got, we're about out of time. I just want to show y'all one more thing that uh, is kind of cool. I'm gonna, I'm going to show you how to, you know how you have a website or you have a bunch of websites, it's got the copyright data in there. There are some themes that will do this for you automatically, but I don't, not all of them, and certainly not the ones I've used. Wouldn't it be rather than every January 1st, and if you have like 30 websites or 50 websites or 100 websites, you'd have to go in and go into all these websites and update the date. Wouldn't it be cool if it did it by itself? Well, you can. And um, so let's show you real quick how to do that and we can wrap up. So I'm going to just uh, copy the style of this so I don't have to redo it. Copy, paste, style. Okay, so let me go here. Okay, so this is just a heading widget. I'm going to make it a P. And uh, for the HTML tag, and I'm going to use dynamic tags. And I'm going to use current date time. I'm going to click on the widget and I'm going to go to custom date format. And if any of y'all have ever looked at the settings section of WordPress, this may look familiar. We're going to delete that. And we're just going to have the year. So you see down here it says 2020, uh, 21. And so, um, 
Now let me get over here and I'm just copying and pasting something. Okay, and so then we go to the advanced. We put before, this puts it before the, the dynamic content. And then we'll put something after it. And so it appears there, and it's all there is to it. And now when 2022 comes around, it takes care of it and does it itself. So um, mm. that can be pretty cool. It's, it's so simple, but so we have, I had two or three others, but we're, I respect your, your time and mine. Um, Maybe we'll just add, go over them next time. Um, next time. Yeah. Um, so let me delete that. So um, I appreciate everybody that came. Let me stop share. And, um, and I look forward to seeing you all. And uh, Juan, you got hooked up where you can talk with uh, Sharon about your, your form. Sure. That's good. And does anybody? I didn't realize my camera was off. Oh, well. Sorry. Um, so anyway, um, any other closing comments, Brian, other than thanks a lot, Sharon, for sharing on the, uh, the forum stuff. And that was very helpful. Yeah, thanks, Sharon. Appreciate you. Yeah, Thank no you. problem. Appreciate everybody attending with our new format. We're still getting used to it, but we'll get better at it. If you guys yeah. have anything in the chat, remember to uh, save the chat. The chat will not be in the recording. So if there's anything you want to link or anything you want to pull out of that, make sure you save it uh, on your own. Makes sense. Yep. All righty. Thank you, everybody, for coming. All right, everyone. And, Thank uh, you. Hope to see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. -bye. See you all next Bye, time. everyone. Thank you. See you. Everybody next time. Bye. See ya.